Hello and welcome to another episode of Flix TV. I'm your host Shannon Lang and today we're at the Tiff Bell Lightbox Theatre in Toronto to chat with writer, actor, director and producer Scott Mosier. Now some of you may know Scott from some of the classic View Askew films he's done like Clerks or Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back to name a few or perhaps you know him from his extremely popular podcast Smodcast that he does along with his longtime buddy Kevin Smith. But today we're here to talk about a fantastic documentary he just produced entitled A Band Called Death. Now the Flix gang came and saw the premiere of this in Toronto last night and let me tell you it was fantastic. So stay tuned for a very punk rock episode of Flix TV. Hey guys, so we're here at the TIFF Bell Lightbox Theatre in Toronto and we're talking with Scott Mosier. Um, Scott has just produced a film called A Band Called Death. So Scott, first of all, I just want to say congratulations. <laughs> using visual aids. What don't they know? Nobody was making music like that in 73. Three black brothers from Detroit, Michigan. What were they called? They were Death. called Death. I just want to say congratulations on getting Thanks. this film and another film, Milius, yes. that you just produced into yes. South by Southwest and many other festivals this year. Can you tell our viewers um, what the documentary is about and how you got involved with it? Uh, a Band Called Death is about these three guys right here, the Hackney brothers, and uh, in early... In the early 70s in Detroit, they, as opposed to they doing a funk band or Motown, those, they decided they wanted to play rock and roll. And so they formed this three, the three brothers, guitar, drum, and bass, and vocals. They create death, and they start playing this rock and roll. And they're sort of roundly rejected, and the music kind of goes away into obscurity. It stays in an attic, and then it sort of emerges years later and is like this amazing music that's been hidden for all these years. And the movie is really about the story of, of family, but also the story of how the music sort of becomes a bond through generations of the family. Right. Many people hear the term producer, and they don't really know what that means. Don't ask me that question. Oh, please? <laughs> I was just going to ask you. Uh, OK, well, I was what just going to ask you what your view of like what a producer does on this project answers the question, what does a producer do? Yeah, it's generally exactly. what, um, what, no, 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 it's all right. Um, what did I, um, you know, my involvement with the project is it was, the director is Mark and Jeff had already been shooting and I found those guys online and I love the music and then I got involved with the project. And so for this particular project, my job is one to created a relationship with them, and then I went out to some people I knew, and those guys brought the financing in. To me, my job is to help the directors sort of realize their vision, even if it's arguing with them. Right. You know, it's like, I, it's my job to sort of um, help them get what they want, but also try, if they're maybe veering off the path, sort of get them back in. This movie was great. I mean, not only the filmmakers, but the hackneys themselves. Mm -hmm. It took a while to earn their trust, and you know, and for good reason it's a really personal story yeah. and then once we had it was like it was a pretty great relationship and everyone sort of saw the same version of the movie so now draft house films is currently distributing the documentary um, can you talk a little bit about the process of getting it out there and how you found using such online avenues as um, Amazon instant video and iTunes um, well with this movie Having, you know, when Clerks was like 1993 or 94 at Sundance, it's like you really had one outlet, which was you were trying to get a theatrical release. And now with this, there's the new business model of before we came out theatrically, we were um, in the States, we came out digitally before we came out theatrically. And now we're even out on DVD and we're continuing to play in the theater. So it's like, it's completely different. I'm still trying to like, catch up with it. Um, but I think it's a matter of like with these film, films that are this size, um, not everybody has access to TIFF or has access to like a cinema that'll play it. Right. Um, so this idea of just using all these platforms, because not everybody has, I mean, it's funny as you put it on iTunes, Amazon, 
VOD and all that, and then there's just a bunch of people on Twitter like, when's it coming on Netflix? It's like, what's happening now is it feels like people have their way of watching it. Yeah. And so now you got to sort of try to get it out to everybody so everybody can access it. But it's been different, but it's exciting to see how with very little money you can sort of get a film out there and sort of get it out to all these people. Right. Who's responsible for the graphic work on the floating photos? Uh, this guy, Joe Vac, out of Florida. Um, one of the other producers, Matt uh, Pernicerio, he had used Joe on a documentary he produced about uh, the LeBron James documentary. Um, no, I've, uh, anyways, it was the LeBron James documentary that everyone knows the title but me. More than a game? More than a game? I think it's more than a game. I could be wrong. It is, more than a game. Thank you. Why don't you say something? And so he had used Joe Vac on that movie, and so we sent all of the materials to Joe because we knew he had to do something because mm -hmm. so much of the story is told, is told, there's no, doc, like there's no, it's just yeah, it's like photos or, vi and, and there wasn't any real video of it. So we did have access to all these, you know, really beautiful black and white photos and stuff. You don't want to just sort of do what's been done before. Like he wanted to push it a little farther and especially trying to make David come alive in, in throughout the movie, whereas like it's, you know, he's not around, so it's there's, there's no um, interviews with him. So it was really about like making the audience feel him as a presence as much as possible. He did for sure. Yeah, it was really cool the way they were done. One that sticks out in my mind is that one where the smoke, smoke. was yeah, billowing yeah. out of his cigarette. Yeah. That was so cool. Now the band had a resurgence in 2009 with the release of their album, and they've since done some live shows. Have you been able to see them live? While we were making the doc, they were art, they were still touring. They were doing small shows, and I saw them in L.A. So I've seen them play live. I do recommend that if you if you see the movie and then see them live, it's like the music's great, but when you've seen the movie, it changes the context of seeing them on stage, and it makes it even more powerful. We when we did the when we premiered at L.A.F.F., they had a we had. Um, Rough Francis, uh, their kids band opened for them and then they were all on stage. And that was pretty amazing to yeah. see, yeah. I understand they're making music again yeah. um, as death. Have you heard any of the new stuff? I've heard a little bit. They've like let me hear some stuff and it's pretty awesome. It's pretty amazing that I, now that, that I have access. Cool. Yeah, yeah, nice. it's pretty awesome. Along with this project, you're also working on several other projects, Milius, um, Freebirds, yeah. and um, The Best Kept Secret. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about those projects? Milius is a documentary about the filmmaker John Milius, who went to USC with George Lucas, is, was with Spielberg, Scorsese, all these people. And, he, and it's, the movie's really about his influence, not only on those people, but on sort of popular culture and, and film. And uh, that, I, that is coming out soon. We're playing Telluride. Best Kept Secret is um, about a school in Newark, um, New Jersey, that, where uh, kids with severe autism go. And the movie is about this teacher, Miss Mina, who um, her class is about to age out. And it's about how she's trying to find after they age out, it's like some of them have nowhere to go or they don't have the, the you know, and the parents don't necessarily have the, have the wherewithal to, because they have to work and stuff like that. It's about how, you know, how difficult that situation is. And so she's trying to find, um, figure out a way because her whole class is going to graduate. And that is POV Docs, which is PBS, picked that up. And that airs in September. And then Freebirds is, a animated movie nice. about two turkeys who go back in time to awesome. stop Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, <wow>. Yeah, <laughs> and it's Owen Wilson and Woody Harrelson cool. and Amy Poehler and George Takai, and that comes out November 1st. Oh, great. Yeah. So before American Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today, no and congratulations again on the film. I truly loved it. Thanks. I just thought it was such, um, it, was, it was great about the music, but it was such a beautiful story about um, some truly beautiful people, and I think they're getting everything that they had coming to them. It's amazing. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, thank you.